young girl then, let's just tell somebody that you're blessed. So tell somebody you're blessed. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. I'm glad. Tell somebody else, you are blessed. Catch on, please. Please, right now. We're blessed in the city. I want to just say that we, I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed wherever I come and wherever I go. Amen? Hallelujah. One, two, three, and...
Brother Jacob, you are blessed. Amen. You know, there was one time we had a family retreat in, in, church, in church here, I believe. In church here. You don't remember that family retreat. And it was a long time ago. And we are looking for somebody to play piano. To play this piano. And one young man said we must pay him. And we actually paid him. I don't remember the, the thing very well, but I was very annoyed. <laughs> I would pay somebody for this time. He was making little money for me. And the country poor. To play the house of God was looking for money. We paid him. And five years after, we, we have more than enough hands to play our piano. Anywhere in this country. So we bless the name of the Lord. God bless you. Just sit down like a queen and like a king. Relax. Stretch your legs. Make sure nobody disturbs you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are 
done it, they have done it consistently, and people cried about this thing. And yesterday I saw an answer. Some a man of those people for five minutes, less than five minutes exhortation. And more than 20, 20 people, 25, 10 years ago, it's not a usual thing. If you know the heart of man, it's not, it's not a usual thing. But God is doing a marvelous work. So some of us, relationships will be broken. If you're old, it's not yet broken. And that what can you have? If that person is going to marry you, that's fine. I have no question. They want to marry, but let's do the proper way. Amen? Yes, tell your pastor, tell your pastor somebody. Let them help you. Your marriage is okay, amen? But if that marriage is beginning with fornication and sexual immorality, stop. I tell you, daughter of God, do what? Stop. Unfortunately, it. Don't put the devil ahead of your women. Because then when you get into the proper union, it's going to hurt you back. You understand? Yeah. I'm talking to daughters of Zion and men of Zion. Amen? Many others will realize what God's calling is upon their lives. God's focus is bringing boldness to everyone in this place. Boldness. They are going to know what's speaking about Christ and your friends will be like, what happened? Where is Femi? Femi from Georgia. Femi High School. Where is that young man? God bless you, God. That's the name of God right here. That's the name of God that we are watching right here. He's going to come with the nation outside of Christ. God touched him and he has been in the open. I read his text messages. Every question he sends it to me and gets immediate response. Amen. God bless you. Just give me as an example. God's story is upon there. Some will be healed from diseases. You have a disease and you travel to come here with a disease. You are not going back with it. In Jesus' name. Some of us receive special kind of faith. To do miracles. Because you know, Jesus was not doing miracles because uh, he was benefiting from it. That's the only way to convince stubborn people. Very stubborn people, very, very adamant people. Just let them see how something they never imagined in their small brain can happen. And they will come to your house at night and ask, What? What can I do? To become a child. That's why Jesus was doing that. And they, they were following him, multitude. Praise God. Many will receive boldness for campus evangelism, and all of us will renew our dedication to Christ. That's general. Doesn't matter where you have gone, even if you have gone, uh, you know, you have to just rededicate yourself. You know, we never stop doing that. Both of us shall be equipped to become the next generation of Christ on our campuses. While here, if you hear God speak to you about starting a business Bible study, you don't hesitate to tell Brother Fala or Brother Bruce or anybody in the National Congress, as a matter of fact. They are here and they will help you in Jesus' name. It's testimony time. Hallelujah. Before I go on, I want to acknowledge the man of God in the house. My pastor, assembly pastor, is right here on ground. Pastor Lome, please stand, stand up and go to your children. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. My daddy, the Lord, Pastor again, is here. Where is, where is he? He needs to have. And the wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. We'll find time later today to address the brethren. Um, you saw Pastor John yesterday. Pastor Jeff, God bless you, sir. What's it? <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, my Pastor, um, Peter Zephena, can you stand on your feet and greet the brethren? That's the man that discipled Pastor Cosmos Legion. When he said Peter, Peter, yes, the Peter man, or the uh, Cosmos man, that's the man that was calling Brother Cos my son. All through college days, he's the one that brought him to Christ and discipled him. He began, he began to do what he does today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our sisters that are here, um, Pastor Jenny, God bless you. Where are you? <laughs> and, and the wife, God bless you, man. Thank you all for coming. Um, Pastor Dubak, stand. That's the most recent pastor in town. God bless you, sir. From Orlando, Florida. Pastor Money, God bless you, sir, for driving all the way. 
And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. I deliberately leave my pastor that I will talk to uh, will talk about his coming here to minister. I may have forgotten somebody, but please forgive me, we have time to cover all the grounds. Pastor Sabu, okay, more. Look for more. God bless you. Sir. Amen. Let our God is great. I will call on her sister Chisu Uko. Come and take her two minutes. Yes. And uh, Sister Brittany Rowe and Raymond Hall. Please, the testimony, how to give testimony is, do you remember how we pray? What's the first thing? Before Christ, what was going on? When Christ stepped, how Christ stepped in, and what happened after that? How many components of a testimony, a very good testimony? Three. Before Christ came in, when, how did he come in, and how did he affect, or what did he do, and how did it affect you later? That's how a good testimony is given. Too many, too much story is not a good testimony. God bless you, sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my name is Jesus, like Uncle George just said. I came to Orange South in 2009. Um, I had just come back from Nigeria and I was in a relationship that was not healthy. And how I knew that it was God working was, was because it didn't make any sense to you know, end it. I thought it was normal. But a week before, I got out of the relationship and I just wanted to come for the conference just to get away, just to clear my head, so to speak. And I came here and I saw young people that were just, I don't understand, they were just in love with God. I don't know how to explain it. They were just dancing and jumping up and down and I thought, you know, these people are crazy. What's going on here? And the funny thing is, I thought I was a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. I did everything, all of that. But I didn't have a relationship with God. And it wasn't until I saw all of this that I told God, I said, God, I, I don't have what these people have. I don't have the joy. I don't have the, I just don't have that excitement. I don't have that fire for God. And the reason I'm capitalizing on this is because there may be some people here that you think you're a Christian. You know, you, you grew up in that same background, but you know in your heart that you don't have that personal relationship with God. And that's when, you know, I cried out to God and I just asked God to save me. I gave him everything and it's been two years now by the grace of God and every day is awesome. Like I always ask myself, for 20 years of my life, I was just wasting away. Like, I mean, I can say that, okay, you know how people try to grace sin and say I wasn't doing this, I wasn't doing that. But the, the biggest sin was that I was not living for Christ. Because every single one of us here was created to exist with God and by God. So if you wake up in the morning and you know that you don't have that relationship with God, I'm, I'm not going to beg you. It's for your own good to just surrender your life to Christ. And BCF has been such a blessing to me. I, this is my family. I haven't been home since I gave my life to Christ. And it's been it's been so awesome. And something else that I, that I wanted to say yesterday when I was um, worshiping God, He gave me an assignment. And even before I could start saying, oh, well, God, like, you know, are you going to be with me? He just started listing all the people from the beginning. He listed Moses, Gideon, Daniel. He said, these people, I gave them assignments, and I, I was with them the whole time. So even all of you that have given your life to Christ, I mean, you're away from, you know, your other friends. Don't walk out of this conference and remain the same. God has the power to change you. A verse that I, I held on to, and I still hold on to it. John 1.12, and it says that, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become children of God. It's not an ordinary thing to come here, you give your life to Christ, and you walk back. No, it's, it's a life-changing thing. It's a life-changing experience. So I just appeal to you that some that are still, you know, trying to decide whether to come up, you're not fooling anyone but yourself. If you know you don't have that relationship, come up and give your life to Christ. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Glory to God. Thank you all for coming in. Where do I start? Um, I was always in the world, and I was always looking in the world, 
for acceptance. I was always looking in the world for someone to accept me for who I am. Um, I was drinking, smoking weed all the time. Um, I also struggled with homosexuality. I was sleeping with guys. And um, it was funny, I came to Blue State University, and it wasn't my first choice to go to Blue State. My first choice was actually to go to Norfolk State University in uh, Virginia. And um, one of my friends, Matilda, who went to high school with me, was at Blue State University. Um, she invited me to Bible study, but I ended up going to, um, to the Bible study. Um, so that's how I went on. Um, it was getting close to my 21st birthday, and I was really, thir I was really hungry and thirsty, but I didn't know what it was. And at the same time, my other best friend now, Amanda, uh, was going to ECF, and she invited me to ECF, went to ECF, um, gave my life over to Christ. And that same night, um, Faith prayed over me, and she was praying, and she was buying her a loose and all this stuff, and I was like, you know, at that time period, I was like, this stuff is not working, you know, I don't feel nothing, you know, but it's not what you feel, but it's about, about your heart. And um, I thank God, because with that, I was able to go to, I found a home church, and with that home church, I was able to grow in the Word, and I was able to overcome home church, so with the Word of God. And
hungry. I don't want God to tell me, like, they're my disciple. And the guy was speaking about discipleship. And I don't want the disciple people, but I want to show up. I was a disciple. And the guy was speaking about discipleship. And I'm like, Lord, I know I'm a disciple now. I'm about to go and disciple people. I said, Amen. Oh my God. This is good. Jesus loves you most on campus. This is your business. See the Holy Ghost and walk with anything. Make a poster, carry it, don't say anything. You see, we have to do crazy things. Jesus did some crazy things. At the age of 12, he went into the temple and started speaking to his grandparents. <laughs> and the mother came and grabbed him and said, Follow me, boy, you are too small. <laughs> Amen. It's time for the war. It's time for the war. This is good time. This is breakfast. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word from God's mouth, from the Bible. We have in our midst an evangelist. Amen? You know I'm an evangelist, amen? But I'm a small evangelist, very, very small. Trying to grow. The calling upon my life is death of an evangelist. God has used my pastor to drill that, to, to tell me that very clearly. In many ways, the very year when I, I, I the God showed me a vision for this ministry, I made up my mind. That was on the uh, 29, 20, 28, 29, 30th of 2004. I made up my mind to go start fellowship at Holy State and start campus ministry. I just went to a meeting in Greensboro, in Greensboro, North Carolina. And everything was going normally. Everything was going well. We passed first meeting, and suddenly my pastor said, She come. Said, She made her name. And he, he placed his hand on me and said, he obtained the, uh, the district evangelist for uh, Petro Fellowship Church, CAC, Christ Apostle Church. I don't know maybe for some of us pastors to remember that. The same month or two months that I made that decision. So God has again clearly maybe, you know, told me that that's what I'm But then, the man I'm talking about, I'm presenting to you, is not anything to be compared to, you know, he's an a world evangelist. And I'm not saying this to impress him. God, I'm sure he knows it because he has traveled the world, preaching the gospel, even in places where the language and the languages are different. And God, we are privileged to have him in the house to speak to young people like us and to tell us about the burden in his heart so that we can run and do what God has called us to do. And it's with pleasure I invite the man of God, the senior pastor in CC, Christ Apostolic Church, all the way from Canada, to come up to the stage and just bless the people of God. Let's shout hallelujah. And thank you, Pastor Dada. Pastor Dada, amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
We wrote so many plays that was acted. There was no movie that you can see it now, no movies that we have. But we are going from one campus to the other to do that. And uh, when we finish that work, we all God had us to do on the campus. When we started working, we started planting churches. And the Lord has helped us to plant a couple in Nigeria. And as the Dr. G said, I'm currently in uh, Canada, where we are planting churches. Last year, we are privileged to plant about six churches. One.